Hello and welcome to Think Watercolour. Uh, for, the, for today's demonstration I am going to show how I painted this estuary scene at low tide uh, with a rusty fishing boat as the focal point. Uh, my aim was to depict a cloudy but bright day and to show you how I composed the scene by following just a few simple guidelines. First I used the rule of thirds to position the horizontals and to place the boat at a good focal point. Next I looked at where I could place some elements to create harmony and movement. And here I used the golden section, uh, or should I say the golden spiral, as a guide without making it too obvious a device. Uh, the positioning of the boys and the three birds take the, vis the viewer's eye in a um, circular motion around the painting without distracting from the main focus, which of course is the boat. And finally, I used aerial perspective to create depth. Uh, for, for example, the sky gets lighter towards the horizon and the distant hills are painted in a lighter tone. I just want to emphasize that this is a demonstration and I'm not suggesting you have to follow rules when you're painting. I'm just trying to show you my thought processes and that if you think a little bit before you start a painting, you quick, quickly improve your skill set. I've sketched the image and uh, put some masking fluid on where the uh, boys are situated uh, along with the three birds. Now this is uh, Bao Hong pure cotton watercolour paper. It's um, 300 gram and it's a rough finish. It's really good paper for doing this sort of uh, painting where I want to use the texture of the paper for dry brush work. Um, as it's low tide, uh, uh, the bed of the estuary is very, very wet and to try to depict the reflective nature of wet sand, I'm using a very, very weak mixture of cerulean blue and sepia. Just add a little bit more sepia to the mix to put in some darker patches, wet in wet, uh, on the uh, bed of the estuary, just to break it up so it's not just a uh, flat colour. The area closest to us of the uh, bed of the estuary is going to have more detail because it because you'll see that as it's closer, the further away. Uh, you wouldn't see too much detail, so uh, I'm going to leave that fairly, fairly flat. Just adding a few darker patches here and there. For the uh, clouds, I'm using a mixture of uh, cobalt blue and a touch of imperial purple uh, to create the shadows in the clouds leaving some white areas unpainted. I'm painting this wet on dry, just so I can have a little bit of control. Just darkening with some uh, burnt sienna and a little bit more of the um, purple, just to uh, create the shadows at the base of each cloud. Again, painting wet in wet, just keep it loose and simple gradually darkening, darkening those shadows uh, until I'm happy with uh, how it might dry. Just making sure that the uh, as it gets closer to the horizon it stays lighter. It helps to create that uh, feeling of aerial perspective. Just lifting out a little bit with uh, a damp brush. 
and then adding more pigment in the shadow areas. Just building up slowly, wet in wet. Making sure that the, um, the cloud nearest to us is darker. This is uh, cerulean blue and a touch of cobalt blue for the main channel of the estuary. Just lifting out a little bit, not quite sure about the uh, how it's going to dry. I don't want it to be too blue, uh, but uh, I think I may have und underdone it, so I'm just adding a little bit more pigment back into the wash. That should dry fine. For the sandbank just behind the boat, uh, this is um, a mixture of uh, yellow ochre and raw sienna. It's uh, very wet sand still, but uh, it's above the, uh, the normal level of the water. So whilst it's wet, it's not as wet as the, uh, the actual bed of the estuary. Just adding a few dark patches, just having, adding a touch of uh, cobalt blue to the mix just to darken some of the areas. Just, just wet in wet, soft, soft finish. For the far hills I'm using it's cerulean blue and a very light touch of jadeite uh, green. It's a very light wash this. Uh, I'm going over the, the foreground hills as well. Uh, it doesn't matter because I'll be going over those darker later. Again it's uh, keep, keep those far distant hills light and it helps with aerial perspective. Just using the edge of the brush to, or the side of the brush, just using that same mix, just to pick up a little bit of uh, reflection in the uh, estuary there. Uh, for the hull of the boat, I'm using yellow ochre and burnt sienna. Uh, just a touch of burnt sienna. Just paint the hull, the whole of the hull, and uh, I'll darken the base of the bowl, the hull shortly. While this wash is still wet, just going to drop in some neat burnt sienna, wet in wet to indicate some rusty patches. Same on the side of the uh, cabin or wheelhouse, it's, uh, it's a bit rusty there and at the front as well. Just added a touch of uh, neat sepia for where there's a pile of nets at the back of the boat. For the uh, closer hills, I've mixed up some ultramarine and a uh, touch of um, jadeite green with some burnt sienna, just to create that uh, darker tone. This will dry lighter anyway, but uh, I want it to uh, help create that feeling of uh, aerial perspective, as I said earlier. Darker colours come towards you, lighter colours tend to recede. Just adding a line just at the edge of the estuary on that side of the bank of the estuary. Just a little detailed touch just to define the painting a little bit more. I've just painted the underside of the uh, of the boat with uh, its neat uh, sepia and with the same mix I'm just using the side of the brush to put some texture in the sandbank and the uh, foreground of the uh, bed of the estuary. Just helps to uh, bring the painting together. 
Uh, this is the point where I'm taking it from the ugly stage to add, by adding darker details it brings the painting together. Once you start putting these details in, uh, the painting tends to come alive. I'm uh, just using a rigger here for the um, the structure above the cabin, keeping the lines fairly simple. I always find a, a rigger an easy brush to use for details like this. Other artists use a very very small, uh, probably number one, maybe zero brush. I prefer a rigger. I like the flexibility of the uh, the tip of the brush. Each to his own. Try different brushes out until you're happy with what uh, what you've got and what you work what you can work with. There's always a learning curve with uh, equipment. Just using some neutral tint for the ropes. I've removed the masking fluid now and I'm just putting in the uh, the colour for the boys. It's um, pyrrole orange, nice bright orange. I'll add a little bit of shadow once this is uh, dried a little bit. Again, just using some neutral tint for the uh, three birds, three seagulls. Just some final touches really. I'm uh, just going to add some uh, shadow to the boys and I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm done. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this uh, video useful. Uh, please don't be a slave to uh, things like Rule of Thirds and the uh, Golden Spiral. Uh, they're just a guide and I just wanted to demonstrate them so that uh, I can pass on a little bit of my experience to you. If you enjoyed the video please give it a like, it always helps with uh, YouTube and uh, do subscribe and hit the notification bell for future videos and thanks again for watching.